What made the offense look so great when Hank Brown took over at quarterback in the Music City Bowl? Let's ask him. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us today, Auburn quarterback Hank Brown. And Hank, I mean, you you have ignited this fan base by uh, you know, those two solid drives that you guys had at the end of the Music City Bowl, of course, led by you. What was going through your mind when your number was called and you ran out there? Yeah, you know, uh, when coach told me to get warmed up, I just, you know, said a little prayer and um, started warming up. was super excited to get the opportunity. Um, you know, I always get told um, in college football, when you get an opportunity like that, you got to, you know, use it to your advantage and really seize that opportunity because, you know, it's not too often where, um, you get opportunities like that as a young quarterback. So I was just super excited um, and and just ecstatic to go out there. Were you expecting that? Because as soon as Peyton was pulled and Holden Gurner went in, I, I kind of assumed it was going to be Gurner the, the rest of the way, and, and that wasn't the case. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say it was a surprise, but um, a little bit, I guess you could say so. But, you know, I wasn't too surprised. I was expecting to get in there at the end um, and felt prepared for it and, and ready to uh, do what I did. Yeah. The deep pass that was a, a money throw by you to, to Caleb Burton, was that called? Were you reading something? Or did you know as soon as that was called, you're like, oh, I'm getting to, they're letting me take a deep shot here? Yeah. As soon as that was called, you know, it was meant to take a deep shot. Um, but as soon as I was able to identify their coverage, they were on cover four. So I knew our slot receiver, Jay Fair, was going to do his best to capture that field safety. Um, and as soon as he did, I knew Caleb Burton on the outside was one-on-one -on -one with that corner, and I knew he was going to win that. Sure. So you going on the field for the first time in your college career and kind of knowing what to read and, and what to look for, I mean, it's got to feel different, right? I mean, you can only you can only kind of – stimulate those things in practice so much hank i mean th that had to be something that was kind of like okay these coaches have prepared me the the prep has prepared me for this moment i know what to look for and i know what to do yeah you know it was definitely a little bit of a difference but i think i was totally prepared for that you know playing scout team this year going against the number one defense the entire year now, you know i'm used to it now it's it's nothing new the game didn't feel fast out there you know it felt like i was um playing at the speed uh, that the game was going and you know so i felt i was prepared and it wasn't fast at all I felt totally confident out there yeah you look comfortable and i think that was probably the biggest takeaway and the biggest talking point amongst the auburn fan base was you know it, it didn't seem like it was just you nailed two or three throws i mean it seemed very methodical it seemed like you were going one or two reads downfield then knew when to go to your check down you went to your running backs a few times there you went to the tight end uh, a time or two there is that is that what was happening or were you were you going a few progressions deep and then going to the check down because that's what it looked like yes sir yeah so there were a few plays in there where um they were cover four cover three dropping back deep went through my progression and knew at no knew where my check down was so i could just drop it down to him um and you know jeremiah cobb's a very special player and he got some good yards for me sure sure was that a you, you guys are roommates? You've brought that up a few times. Was that a cool moment? Both of you guys being uh, being next to each other and able to score that touchdown together? Yeah, it, it was really cool. You know, um, we got in the end zone and we were just super high. You know, it was it was definitely a cool moment. One I won't forget for sure. Yeah. So, what have conversations been like with other players and you following that? I mean, I know I know you guys were ultimately bummed in the locker room with, with the with the outcome of the game, but I'm sure you've had several conversations with folks about your play and about you stepping up when you kind of were given the keys for a few minutes there. What do those conversations look like, Hank? Yeah. You know, I've talked to a bunch of the players and, you know, they were just super excited for me, you know, just congratulating me on, you know, the game and whatnot. And it was super cool to see um, all my teammates just do that and acknowledge that. Um, and, 
you know, I've gotten to build some more relationships through that um, with players on the team. So it's been really awesome just to um, see that and, and see the players, you know, revolve around that. Sure. And as far as, you know, were these guys that you're typically throwing to in practice? I mean, you, you, you completed some to Hooks, some to, to, to Camden Brown, to Rivaldo, obviously Burton. You mentioned Jay Fair. Um, are these guys that you're used to throwing to in practice? Or was this kind of a situation where, you know, you were just kind of, you know, taking what the defense gave you and, and, and you were all happened to be on the same page with some of these guys? Yeah, you know, I don't get a ton of reps with these guys. Uh, early on bowl practices, um, I was getting some good reps with them. Um, but there were only about three, three to four practices in there where I was getting good reps. So it's not like we had built-in chemistry or anything, you know. So it was just kind of going out there and playing with them. It was awesome, you know, getting to play with uh, them and, you know, do what we did. So. When you when you let go of the football and you think about the placement, I mean, obviously you wanted away from defenders, but it seems like you put it in a spot where guys could get yardage after the catch. The Jay Fair catch and run, I think, is probably the best example of that. Hank, is that intentional when when you're going through your throwing motion? No doubt. Um, I try and put it in a perfect spot that makes it easiest on the receiver. Um, for yards after catch. Um, and I try to be as intentional as I can be with the placement of that ball on every throw, um, just for what's best for our team, whether that's putting it away from a defender or just to, you know, catch it and get the first down or whether that's, you know, to Jay fair, for example, on a little five yard end, uh, you know, catch and run for another 15. So I try to be super intentional with that. Like even on the post ball, just allowing him to catch it in stride so he can keep going. Just, um, you know, I think that's a big part of uh, quarterback play that's super important that I try and do. Yeah. I'm sure you've studied those snaps now, and I'm sure it's very valuable now to have game tape on yourself at this level to, to study and kind of address and hope to take that step forward. How would you kind of critique things that you could have done better in, uh, in on those two drives? Yeah, I think there was uh, one or two reads where um, – my eyes were in the wrong spot. One time I handed it off to Cobb and uh, the Mike linebacker blitz and I, I should have pulled that and either thrown it to uh, Mike on a five yard hitch or ran that. Um, okay. So there were a few reads in there where I wish I could have had back. Um, and then that last throw that I had, um, I wish I would have got that a little bit higher. Um, but, you know, there's always room for improvement uh, no matter what, what you're doing. So I think, uh, you know, it was good to get that tape, like you're saying, and, and just, you know, be able to work harder and get better. No question. Auburn quarterback Hank Brown, our guest on the show today. What else can come from that strong fourth quarter, as well as what does it mean for the offseason? We'll discuss that with Hank in just a moment, right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is the best place to wager on all of your sports action. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but it's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's all you have to do. It's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays and more. So, so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NFL and the Locked On Podcast Network. Our guest on the show today is Hank Brown, Auburn quarterback. So what kind of conversations have you had with, with folks around you as far as preparing for the offseason? Hank, I know we talked a few weeks ago, at least going into bowl practice, about what your goals for the offseason was. Now that you've put some stuff on tape, now that you got some uh, some game reps and look good doing it, does it change what your goals for this offseason are? You know, it, I don't think it changes my goals. Uh, I think my my headspace before is the same headspace I'm going to be in now. I'm going to grind as hard as I can yeah. summer and, you know, do what I was talking about um, earlier on this show last time I came on of just really focusing on protections and coverages um, and 
working on those to just help me with my game. Um, and along with that, just getting with players like the new receivers, getting with my offensive coaching staff just to, you know, truly master this offense and start building chemistry with these receivers. Um, yeah. So I, is, you know, my head was in the same place it'll be now. Um, so, yeah. Sure. What kind of conversations did you have with your coaches after um, after the success you found in the fourth quarter there? And I know I know you don't want to tell us everything, but just as far as like big picture conversation you guys had um, with your coaches, what did they say? Yeah, you know, I think just the big picture of, you know, what they were telling me is they were just super proud of me um, just for the work that I put in this year, you know, seeing it pay off at the very end um, and just excited for the future. You know, they're excited to see you know, what I can do in the future and just, you know, encouraging me to keep going and, and working really hard. Sure. You mentioned some of the new receivers coming in. I mean, have you watched tape of some of these, like these true freshmen that are coming in? I mean, they're insane, Hank. A hundred percent. They're, they're, they're going to be very special. Um, and I just, there's no words that can explain how excited I am to have them. It's going to be, you know, game changing, obviously. Yeah, I mean, all of these guys come in. It's going to raise the bar for sure. As far as uh, as far as prepping for the bowl game, because obviously, you know, uh, it, it's great that you played well, but uh, I'm sure you would also want, want to win the football game. How how much was prep impacted by? It sounds like there was um, the flu kind of made it around the locker room, as well as guys leaving via the portal, so it wasn't the normal roster. How much was game prep and bowl prep impacted by that? Would you say? I would say early on it was it was impacted by that. Um, there was the flu was going around while we were mm -hmm. sitting, um, and you know some players weren't able to practice with us, and so I think it it definitely affected it early on. Um, but the late stages of our preparation, I think we had you know most all the pieces to be prepared, um, and so yeah, that's what I would say for that. Got it. Got it. What was the balance of like prepping for Maryland versus prepping for next year? Was it pretty even or was the first week or so prepping for next year and then they switch more to to game specific stuff? What, what did that look like? Yeah, you know, that was a really interesting part for me because, you know, the bowl game is just it's such a weird balance because like we have our exit meetings with our coaches right after our last game, the Iron Bowl. And mm -hmm. so it's you're talking about next season, but you still have the bowl game, which you can argue should be the most important game of your season, you know? So just finding that balance was a little strange for me. And obviously I haven't been in this situation. So uh, just trying to figure it out and uh, learn how it works and whatnot. Um, but I'd say, like you were saying, the first week, we're not thinking about Maryland. We're focusing on ourselves and what yeah. we can um, and then we start slowly transitioning into Maryland and how we can attack them and start game planning for them. Sure. Sure. Yeah. A lot of the guys that were in your recruiting class got a, got a ton more reps. D did any of those guys stand out to you as far as, as far as their play? Yeah. I think, uh, the one guy that stood out to me, um, was Sylvester Smith. Um, he's a guy who works his tail off and, is a stud. He's gonna be a really good ball player for us, um, and he made some some good plays for us, um, especially that one really good pass breakup that he had late in the game. Yeah, deep in the middle of the field, playing the ball. Yeah, he um, he didn't give up on the play. I've heard nothing but good things about Sylvester Smith, and he's gonna be a guy I talk about a lot this off season. Then also just to keep it in the defensive backfield, K and Lee. What do you see? In K and Lee, I, he just continues to impress me the more that he plays, Hank. K and Lee is going to be one of the best DBs, you know, that Auburn has had, in my I opinion. I agree. Um, he is an absolute stud. He he has an incredibly high ceiling. He, his ceiling is so high, and I, I can't wait to see how good he plays next year. Um, but like you're saying, he is so impressive and it's going to be fun to see him start and play the whole season next year. So I'm excited to see what he can do. He's a really special player. Yeah. I, I know you and Jeremiah Cobb are very close. We mentioned the roommate thing earlier in the show. Uh, how do you guys, as far as 
um, when you're just chilling in your your apartment or your dorm room or whatever it may be and, and talking about football and talking about you know the game itself, what does that relationship look like as far as you guys pushing each other? I imagine that's what that friendship looks like. Yeah, you know, uh, we we are are very close, obviously being roommates and whatnot. Yeah, you know, it'd be special to um, continue to grow that relationship because you know being in the backfield together that was super fun. And you know, like you're saying, I think we will push each other and grow together. You know, Jeremiah is me and Jeremiah both. I feel like are more on the quiet side. Like we're, we're, we kind of keep to ourselves. We're more independent, um, and so. You know, being able to be close in that relationship is going to be huge uh, going into the future. And I think we'll both push each other and not just each other, but this team and uh, just grow together as leaders. Yeah. Hank, your your head coach, Hugh Freeze, he said after the game, the quarterback competition going into spring was wide open. Is that something that he's told you guys in one-on-one situations or him to the group? Or is that something that's always just kind of implied? Or did you hear about that through uh, through the press conference? Yeah, you know, I heard him specifically say that, obviously, in the press conference. Um, so that's just super exciting for me and, you know, just more motivating for me to, you know, keep grinding and working hard. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, Hank, I have a very important question for you in just a moment that I think the Auburn fan base wants your thoughts on. We'll discuss that in just a moment, right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall is the best place to buy all of your Auburn swag. If you're watching this show, odds are you don't have enough Auburn swag because you can't have enough Auburn swag. And Alumni Hall has three awesome physical locations, one in Huntsville, one in Auburn on College Street, and one in Opelika in Tiger Town, they're all fantastic. Everything in there is officially licensed. But if you're hearing this, you're like, oh my goodness, I want to buy stuff from Alumni Hall, but I don't live anywhere near there. Lucky for you, you can go to alumnihall.com. They've got a ton of Auburn swag, whether it's for you, whether it's for a loved one, whether it's for your kid, child, infant, baby, pet, your walls, your desk, they've got it all for you. So Alumni Hall in three physical locations in Huntsville, Auburn, Opelika, or check them out online at alumnihall.com. Hank Brown, Auburn quarterback, hanging out with us for a few more minutes on today's edition of Locked on Auburn. Hank, uh, give, give us how you truly feel about this baby goat thing, because I'm not going to lie. When I when I saw Auburn Twitter and Auburn social media explode and everybody kind of saying, like, Hank Brown, the baby goat, I felt a little bad. Because I, I felt like I did that moment a little for you. So I, one, I'm, I apologize. Uh, I apologize over text over the weekend. But what what are your genuine genuine thoughts on uh, on that? I'm not opposed to it at all. I think that it's it. You know, I'm I'm game with it. It works with me. Um, I think if if we started with it, let's roll with it. So you know, right. I right. think I think I I'm a fan. All right. All right, yeah, I didn't expect that much of it when when you completed that pass. I'm not going to lie to you. So my my bad, uh, okay. my bad on, on that. So uh, it, as far as uh, it, as far as just kind of the mindset of everything moving forward, just from a player's point of view, as we record this Monday morning, Hank, there's a lot of scholarship spots still available before uh, before things get going and everybody has to be on campus by January 10th if they want to go through spring, which Hugh Freeze has talked about how important that is to the, the need to go through spring as a player. How are you guys kind of monitoring who's coming in to your team via the portal? Do you guys rely on like media the same way a normal fan would, or do you guys kind of get a heads up beforehand? Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. Um, and I've been learning that, but I think most of us just kind of, find out through the team or through media like you're saying you know it's not like there is a huge announcement that the coaching staff will tell us you know this guy's coming in or this guy's coming in you know so i'd say we do kind of find out through the media or just through our teammates yeah so what what does that process look like when you hear okay somebody's moved in and getting ready for for spring semester 
if they're an offensive player with you being a quarterback, do you reach out pretty quick? Are you somewhat aggressive or do you wait till you see them at the facility? Like, what does that process look like? I think fans would be interested to hear that. Yeah, you know, I think a big part of uh, being a quarterback is being super intentional and building those relationships with, you know, whether it's offense or defense, but especially for offense, you know, we're going to be with them more uh, like a receiver type. Um, I'm going to reach out to them and start building that relationship so that, you know, when they see me, they feel welcomed and they know my face. And so we can start to build that relationship earlier. Yeah, right. Right. Well, Hank, thank you so much for your time as always, man. And uh, it's been great catching up with you all season. Hopefully we'll do it again throughout the, uh, the off season as you guys prep for spring, which will be here before you know it, which is kind of, kind of crazy to think about. But I mean, I I just can't imagine you going through spring this year versus last year. I mean, you've got to feel like a totally different player. No doubt. Um, I I definitely do. And I do want to kind of touch back Mm -hmm. on earlier as you were talking about, you know, my mentality going into the game. Uh, I think this is just an important part of who I am and and what I kind of am about. You know, I feel that my confidence going into the game was only because I place my identity in Christ and I don't place my identity in football. You know, it's just something that I do, um, but it's not my identity. And since my identity is in Christ, I find confidence knowing that Jesus has already won, and so I can go out there and play free knowing that whatever happens, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether good or bad. You know, it's it's not what's going to define me. And so I think that's just a big part of, you know, me and just knowing that all that glory goes to God no matter uh, what happens on the field. So I just wanted to put that out there uh, knowing you know, earlier what you asked. No, I'm glad you did. And Hank, we went live, Daryl Dapperge and I went live after the game. And of course, a a big talking point was was your performance in the Music City Bowl. And I told Daryl, it's like, look, I I just, I know this kid and and something that has stood out to me, even with watching your high school tape before we got to really know each other, Hank, something that stood out to me in your game was how comfortable you were You never really got too high. You never really got too low. And I guess I've never really thought about you tying that to your walk with Jesus Christ. I never really kind of put those two things together, but it makes total sense. Yeah. You know, I just find total confidence and peace. That's what I find. I find peace in knowing that, you know, God's got me. God's got a plan for me. You know, my favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, um, for I know the plans um, I have for you to declare the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in a future. And so I, I truly find hope and peace in that knowing that he's got me, whatever happens out there. So yeah. that's what gives me peace and that composure on the field. Yeah. What a great message to start 2024. Hank, thank you so much for your time, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Appreciate that, it. Yeah. That is Hank Brown, Auburn quarterback hanging out with us. Be sure to click that subscribe button really helps out the show. Like the video. And uh, come back tomorrow. We'll be here. This has been Locked on Auburn.